Hey YouTube, it's ripped off and pissed off coming back at you again. I had a reply in regards to the questions I asked in regard about the farm stock case or the farm stock decision. Now, just to remind you why that was important was because they called it a landmark decision in Queensland body corporate law because a judge ruled on the basis of contract law which is unheard of. So I was curious in regards to that. So I made the inquiry through one of the Strata websites that I have found that you are able to inquire through. Now, of course, I'm assuming that these are connected to Strata companies and law, and law firms, but they offer, had the offer, so I asked the question. Um, I'm not going to name any names of any websites or lawyers or body corporate management companies or anything like that. But what they did say is that they had a response from this particular law firm that they use to answer these questions. And I'm going to read the response to you word for word because my question to them was, I've heard about this case, I've heard about how the judge ruled in regards to the comp based on the contract obligations and I was wondering would the same ruling apply to an owner who wanted to um, seek compensation or restitution or something like that would the same rules apply if it was a single owner was what I wanted to know basically so the response was I think before we start suing for compensation, we need to start, I think the starting point should be, one, who has obligations with respect to the area, two, whether they have been met, three, if not, seeking to force them to be met by the Commissioner's Office, four, then looking at it after all those things have been done. The reality though is that costs of the proceedings for something of this nature would far outweigh any compensation that might be received. That's word for word, the response that was sent to me. So firstly, I never said anything about suing anybody. I just wanted to know if the law would apply to an owner in a similar circumstance. Now, what they've done here is they've sent me all the way back to the beginning of the maze because they've told me to go back and start where I've already started from. So secondly, I would have thought if they received a question in of, of such a sophisticated nature in regards to quoting a case, um, quoting a judge's decision word for word within that case, that the assumption would be made that these steps that are already in place within the commissioner's legislation or whatever have already been taken. If someone's asking this question over and above, because common sense would tell you that the first steps would be the ones that they're advised by the committee or the body corporate company. So really they're just blowing smoke up my hoo-ha because they don't want to answer the question. And instead of answering the question as to whether it yes, it would apply or no, it wouldn't apply, they've simply tried to discourage me by saying, oh, and if you did get to that stage, the cost of the lawyer would be far more than the compensation that you would receive. So it would be a waste of your time. So again, we don't have anyone supporting an owner going out on their own. Um, I've got a lot of notes because I prepared. Um, yeah, so that thirdly, there's no, it proves, the response proves that there is absolutely no reasonable way that a single lot owner can take any type of action based on what is happening within their complex, decisions that are being voted on by the body corporate committee, which is ruled by a majority because the Irrigation got turned off regardless of my lot voting no for that. So it's a majority rules. So there is absolutely no recourse for a single owner who is unhappy with the service that they're receiving and 
is concerned about the value of their property plummeting. And we're going to talk about property values later on. I'm still researching that one. So there's absolutely no one to complain to. So basically I had two choices. I could leave my garden to continue to slowly die as it was, or I could spend time, money, effort to replace plants, water regularly, weed, remove all the dead stuff, and I've already paid for somebody else to do that. They were the only two choices I have. These are the only two options that are available to me under the current system. The fact that simple contract law doesn't apply, the fact that he's in breach of the actual contract that was signed doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So contract law gets thrown out the window when it comes to body corporates. Um, so this is why owners get sick and tired and fed up and they throw their hands up in the air because they keep going around the maze, but they can't find any solution. So they just keep going around in a circle, coming back where they started from and they give up. They throw their hands up in the air and say, I can't understand all these legal people and it doesn't make sense to me. And this is just the way it is. I just give up. I'll just keep giving you my money every quarter or whatever. Um, so that's a completely unfair situation for owners to be in. And I believe it's really designed that way, that the people that are benefiting from this legislation and these laws and even these different decisions within body corporate legislation, like the farm stock judgment, it was that it was ruled that the contractual obligations of both sides or both parties of the contract weren't being met. So therefore they ruled in favour of the plaintiff. So that's the whole thing that I'm trying to get at here is that individuals should have the opportunity to do this. If the on-site manager does and the body corporate company does for whatever reason, then how come owners can't on their own stand up and say, no, I'm not happy about this and I live in this community as well and we need to have a, someone independent come in. Well, yeah, we can get the commissioner to come in, but he doesn't have any real power. So, you know, they, he can adjudicate and give a decision, but there's a whole section on the website about how to take your adjudication decision to the magistrate's court because the other person isn't doing what the adjudicator told them to do. So it's just this whole spin cycle that you just wouldn't be able to get out of. So based on what I've found out with in regards to that and confirmation in regards to the contract law, I've decided there's a few amendments that I'm going to, other amendments, additional amendments that I will discuss with Ross Vasta when I get my opportunity to get in front of him. One would be the ability to cancel caretaker contracts for breach, as in poor performance or not performing all of the duties that are in that contract. Um, a provision for single owners to have the ability to take action um, against the committee if the committee is not acting in the best interest of the entire complex, of the entire lot owners, because to let the complex die is not in the best interest of the entire lot owners. To not enforce or make sure that the on-site manager not being on him all of the time, why isn't this done, why isn't this done, why isn't this done, is not in the interest, best interest of all of the lot owners, particularly investors, because if investors don't come to the property, so they think their little investment is going along nicely and, you know, it's in a good growth area, which our suburb is, and we're in some great catchment areas for schools, which are much sought after. You'd think your investment's just traveling along nicely when actually it's not because the state of the complex is getting into disarray and deadness, quite frankly, it's dead, deadness. So, nobody is benefiting from that. So there needs to be action to be able to be taken by individual lot owners or a way for them to have a majority vote overturned if it isn't in the interest of everybody who owns a stake within the complex. And thirdly, I think there should be more penalties for management 
companies for not advising committee members properly. Um, we've talked about this before, but also not advising them in the best interest of all of the owners. So to want, because they're present at the meeting, they just don't have any voting powers. So for the committee to say, let's turn off the irrigation in the whole complex, why didn't the body corporate company chime in and say, well, okay, you'll be saving a bit of money now, but in the long term, if you think to 10 years when you're looking to sell your property or whatever the case may be, that no, I can't see how anybody put this case to the committee members. And if somebody did put this case to the committee members and they still voted to turn off the irrigation, then what hope in hell have we got, people? They don't care if the complex dies. They haven't got the business acrement or I don't know, but surely you want your property to go up in value and not down. I would have thought. Um, so the here I've got the actual judgment. So this is why this stuff I think is important and in relation to the farm stock case or decision, um, because the judge has ruled in a way that is unusual for body corporate ruling, but seems to me to be very reasonable and logical considering everything else that goes on. So while the duty to cooperate is continuing, if one party is in breach of its duty of cooperate so the performance of the contract cannot be affected, the other party will be entitled to terminate the contract. So while the duty to cooperate is continuing in a contract, always continuing, if one party is in breach of its duty of cooperation so that the performance of the contract cannot be affected, the other party will be entitled to terminate the contract. So what that means, basically, I've been trying to break it down for myself, is that in relation to this and the management rights complex, uh, contract in our complex, the duty to cooperate is continuing from manager to manager to manager to manager. So this manager doesn't have any more or less duty than the last one and nobody's asking him to do anything more or less than the last one. But if one party, so in this case the on-site manager, is in breach of its duty to cooperate or its duty of cooperation, and the performance of the contract cannot be affected, so it's a caretaking gardening contract, so that applies here, cannot be affected because someone is in breach. The other party, which is our body corporate company, the committee, the owners, all of us, will be entitled to terminate the contract. So that means by this judge's ruling, we could terminate his contract right now the way I interpret this, but not according to the way the lawyers interpret this, because that probably doesn't make them any money. So it should be able to reply in reverse. There's no reason why it shouldn't apply in this situation to our body corporate company. But at the end of the day, as the guy said, the amount of money you have to pay to a lawyer to have this go on and on and on and on and on and on and on, the body corporate just doesn't have that money. And as owners, we don't have that kind of money to all put in to take something to court endlessly to fight legislation that goes around in a circle. It's just ridiculous. And if a ruling has already been made in regards to the duties of cooperation to the contract, then a judge is already saying that the legislation is stupid and it's wrong. So why do I have to make these videos? Why is the government not doing anything about it? It's a cash cow, an absolute cash cow for everybody. Lawyers, body management companies, the government, the developers, they're all rolling around, the on-site manager flippers that are staying three years and flipping their contracts. Everyone's making money at the expense of the lot owners. So. Again, we need another dead end because we are a lot owner, unfortunately. 
So again, people, please share, share, share with anyone you know who lives in a body corporate, who owns an investment in a body corporate, anyone who you think might be interested in these videos. I'll keep you guys updated in regards to property pricing in the area because we have got one for sale in the complex at the moment, so we can do a direct comparison. I've reached out to that real estate agent to try and get some information because they had one big open home and nobody's been to look at it since. So that's kind of interesting. Um, and I'm going to look at um, doing another bit of a field trip. Um, there's been some work happening in the complex over the last week and a half. And I'm not sure if that's because of all the jumping up and down and screaming that I have been doing um, and or whether the agent has gone mental um, and said, clean this up because I can't sell this property with this place looking like that. So that's going to be an interesting one, but we'll do we'll get another walkthrough happening soon. Thank you for watching. Again, quality is not great, but this is about providing you with information and this is about getting legislation change, not about making a snazzy video. Um, Ross Vasta, if these videos happen to make it to you before I do, please. I want to talk. Let's sit down at a table and talk about how this is affecting constituents directly in their back pockets. I'd love to have a chat to you about it. Um, other than that, I shall see you soon, YouTube. Don't forget the um, petition and the Facebook page, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks.